Hey everyone, welcome to the video tutorial to make your very own champagne bottle. So I am going to show you the step by step on how to make this champagne bottle. You can download all the information um, for the tutorial over at my website emmacraftsdesign.com. Enjoy the video! Okay, first let's get started with the list of material. We'll use DK yarn. To go with DK yarn, I like to use a 3.5 millimeter hook or E hook, but feel free to use a size bigger or smaller depending on your tension. Remember that you want your stitches to be quite tight for making amigurumi. Then I have some clippers, some polyfill, sewing needles, pins, and a marker. So what colors am I going to use today? Um, I'm going to make my bottle slightly different from this one. So in here, the pieces you have are the cork, the wax seal, the label, and the bottle itself. What I'll do is I'll use this blue to make the main body of the bottle, then this orange to make the label and the wax seal, and that gold brown to make the cork. Let's get started. So the first thing we're going to start with is the main body of the bottle. You can find the pattern for free onto my website, emmacraftsdesign.com. Um, and it's both a free pattern on the blog and a free PDF. So feel free to just download the PDF. Okay, so first we're going to start with a magic ring. If you haven't, you can or you can watch my um, tutorial on how to do a magic ring. So I like to first wrap my yarn around my fingers, then put the hook on the and grab that thread here with the hook, and then chain one to start my magic ring. So we're gonna do six single crochet in a magic ring. And then I like to tighten my magic ring, but not too much, just so that this first stitch isn't too hard to get into. The second round will be increase in each of the stitches to go up to 12 stitches. Once this second round is complete, I like to then tighten my magic ring as tight as I can. Okay, now let's continue. The next round is one single stitch and then increase all the way around. So in that case, um, I'm gonna start putting my marker. I like to put my marker in the last stitch of the round. And the last increase of the round. Now we have 18 stitches here. 
The next round is you want to single crochet two and then increase and do that six times to obtain 24. So I won't actually stop for the next few rounds. We're just going to go all the way to 30. So the next two rounds, um, you will just do single crochet and it increases. Okay, so we've now finished round number five and we have 30 stitches around. So the next round is going to be to work in the back loops only and we're just going to um, just do single crochet around but in the back loop only. So if you um, are not familiar with what the back loops are, when you look at your stitches, you have the front loop which is towards you and the back loop here. So make sure you, you only take that back loop and just crochet all the way around. And what that will do is it will create that little ridge to turn your bottle um, around. So just go ahead and crochet 30 single crochets in the back loop only.
Okay, so now you can see that it's starting to curve the wrong way. So make sure that you do push the stitches back. And the next step is for 12 rounds, you want to do a single crochet in each of the stitches. So you're going to single crochet 30 for 12 rounds. So I might just speed up this section because it's a bit boring for you to watch that.
Okay, so this is the last stitch of the 12 rounds. So the next step is going to be to decrease to give the top um, shape of the bottle. So the next round we're going to single crochet three and then decrease and do that six times to go to 24 stitches. To decrease, um, if you've watched my previous tutorial, you know that I like to do the invisible decrease. So I put my hook into the two front loops of the next stitches and then do a stitch as normal. And I find that um, really helps to keep my stitches nice and tight. And yeah, I think it just looks nicer and you can barely see. Another trick um, that you can do to avoid um, holes when you do decreases is instead of doing um, your typical yarn over, you could also do a yarn under and that helps. If you're not quite sure what I'm talking about, this is just the way you put your yarn when you're grabbing it with your crochet hook. So you can either grab it from the top or grab it from the bottom. And um, that gives the stitches slightly different look. I still like to do yarn over just because I'm most comfortable um, crocheting this way. But um, I find that sometimes if I'm having issues decreasing my stitches, I'll do um, occasionally a yarn under and that helps to um, tighten the stitches. So the next round is just a straight um, round of single crochet around. So 24 single crochet around. Okay, now we're going to do more shaping for that neck of the bottle. So the next round is single crochet six and then decrease. And you do that three times to get 21 stitches. Okay, um, the next round is again just a single um, crochet round, so just single crochet 21.
and then we're going to decrease again um, do three decreases across the round so the next one will be single crochet five and then decrease three times to get 18 stitches And then again, a round of just straight single crochet. So we're gonna do it um, 18 single crochet around. Okay, so now that we have 18 stitches around, um, I normally find this is probably the best um, time to stuff your stuff, your um, amigurumi. So I'll just pull the yarn a little bit more so that it doesn't come undone. Um, so see if I just put it like that, it will actually hold by itself. Um, so in that case, just grab a bit of stuffing and make sure that you don't stuff the bottom too much. Otherwise, it won't be able to stand um, by itself. But you can see this one also stands by itself. So just don't put too much stuffing at the bottom. Um, I know some people like to put a piece of cardboard. Um, I wouldn't really recommend cardboard just because it can get a bit, um, you know, it doesn't age very well. But if you want, you could also use a bit of plastic canva to go at the bottom. Um, in that case, I would probably suggest inserting it before you reach that 18 stitches mark. Um, but I personally just like to put stuffing without putting anything. I think that if you do the stuffing properly, it doesn't really matter and your bottle will still stand on its own. Um, so yeah, I don't really see the point in putting an extra layer and I kind of like um, the fact that it's just soft the whole way through. Um, okay, so I think that's probably enough. I won't put too much towards the top because then um, the stuffing kind of gets caught in my hook and I that's annoying. Like, I really don't like it. So um, I'll leave it there for now and I'll add a bit more stuffing um, as I continue crocheting the neck of the bottle. Now, um, I'm actually not going to use a stitch marker anymore just because I find it again a bit annoying to just keep on removing and putting the marker back especially because we're going to have um, really few stitches now. So the next round is going to be to go to 15 stitches so we are going to single crochet four and then decrease three times around. So yeah I won't use a stitch marker from now on. Then again, the next round is just one single crochet in each stitch. So you've noticed we've been doing a round of decrease and a round of just single crochet. And that 
sorry about that and that just helps to um, decrease gradually rather than a very sharp increase so one round of 15 single crochet And now we're going to again, so do three single crochet and then decrease to go to 12 stitches. And after that, so after we've done this, I think I'll just add a bit more stuffing because now you can see the stuffing is quite low in there. So three single crochet and a decrease three times around to get 12 stitches. Yeah, just be careful because sometimes your thread just uh, splits, which is what happened right there, which is really annoying. Okay. So at this point, to add a bit more stuffing, I generally just use the back of my hook. And I make sure to not push too um, hard down because that would um, then make it hard to stand. So again, you just want to stuff that top bit there. Just make sure that it still stands. Perfect. So. Okay. Oh my god, what have I done with that thread? Okay, so the next step is to do two rounds um, of single crochet. So we're going to just do two rounds of 12 stitches and then we are going to change to the gold color. So I will do those two rounds and I won't finish that last stitch on the last round. You'll see why. Okay, so this is the last stitch of the second round and you see I haven't finished it. So the reason why is because now we're going to attach um, the, brown, the brown yarn to do the cork. So to do this, you can either just pull it through or if you want to make it extra secure, you can make a slip knot. So to make a slip knot, I just make a loop and then I just pull the bit through. So this can now be adjusted i will put it on my hook and i will pull it through to finish my stitch with that loop um afterwards what i like to do 
is when I start crocheting the next round, I will crochet over these two layers. So those two other threads to kind of um, hold them in place. So the next step here is for four rounds, we're going to crochet around um, for 12 stitches again. So I'm going to just do this for a few. So a few of the single crochet, I'm just going to hold these and see, I'm just crocheting them with the stitch, just underneath the stitch. So I've now done five. I think that's probably enough. So now I'm just going to cut those. I'll just go ahead and cut those. I've never had any um, of my colors, you know, um, like I've never had any of my Emma Goomery come apart with doing this technique. So I think it's now pretty secure. And then you just keep going around. So and we said we're doing four rounds of 12 stitches. And we will need to add a bit more stuffing at the end of those four rounds. Okay, so now I've finished those um, four rounds with the 12 stitches in that gold color, like brown color. So I'm just going to add more stuffing because, again, um, the neck of this bottle is not stuffed enough. So And Again, you want to make sure you don't shove it down too much so that it's going to impact um, the stability of your bottle. Just need a little bit more up there. So yeah, if you pull it too much like I just did, um, it's okay, you can always kind of pull it back up. I just pushed a bit too hard. Okay, great. So I'm happy with that. I'm happy with the fact that it doesn't fall off. It just still stands, so that's good. All right, so then the next step, we are going to work in the back loops only. And that will just do this little um, edge again to make the top of that cork. So um, yeah, again in the back loop only, we're gonna do we're gonna increase to eighteen stitches. So one single crochet and then one increase. Okay, um, 
And now the next step is for two rounds. We are going to um, just as see like um, single crochet around. So we are going to single crochet 18 for two rounds. All right, so now that's two rounds of um, single crochet and we're just going to um, decrease for the next two rounds. So um, one single crochet and decrease around, so that will be six times to go back to 12 stitches now. And after I do this round, I'll just finish um, stuffing the top. Oh my goodness, and this yarn is very splitty, so it's not very fun to work with. Okay, so this stuffing is going to be the last occasion we get of finishing to stuff. So, um, yeah, we need to make sure that we do it really well. So when you have your stuffing like this, I actually, if it needs to be kind of compact because I want to make it really well stuffed at that top bit, I'm just going to kind of make sure I compact it myself before I put it down. And that helps a lot, I find. So I'll just kind of make sure it's nice and compact. Okay, great. Cool. And so I'm happy with how well it's stuffed. And now we're going to go on to the last round, which is um, just decrease all the way around. So decrease six times to get six stitches. Okay, and that's it. So now you can just pull your yarn through and cut it. And if you're not familiar with the um, invisible cast, oh, 
cast off or fasten off. So the way I do it is, where's my favorites? Here it is. Um, so you just put um, your yarn through your needle and to make it as invisible as possible, what I like to do is you take, you just put your needle through the front loop of every remaining stitch. So if you just put front loop, so that'll be six front loops. And then if you just pull kind of gently on those and actually see it closes it really well. And then you just have to kind of weave your yarn through a few times. I like to do this at least three times. And then just cut your yarn. Okay, and so this is it. This is the main body of your bottle and the cork all done. Okay, so the next step is we're going to make the waxel and the label. So the waxel is very easy. It's just going to be um six single crochet in a magic ring. So again, rubbing your yarn to make the magic ring, pulling a loop, doing a chain and then single crochet six. Um, and you can go right ahead and pull it. Um, I sometimes do a slip stitch as well in that first stitch just to make it more round or you can um, also close it later. So what I'll do is I'll actually close it later with that yarn um, tail. So cut, cut the yarn, make sure you're closing this really well and then um, I'll just show you now how to um, close it so you threading your needle and what you're going to do is you're going to embroider a new um, stitch so we won't go into that first stitch we will go actually into the second stitch just pass your yarn like this and then you put it back in the middle of that last stitch and there you go so, and then you'll be able to use this to um, this yarn tail here to just sew it to the bottle. Um, and what I like to do is that starting tail here, I'm just going to within with it in a few times um, at the back there, and then we'll cut it so that it's not going to bother us when we want to sew this to the bottle. Just with it in a few times and then just cut it. Okay, so that's it for the wax seal. So very simple. And then the final step is to do the label. So <laughs> In um, this one, obviously, I did different colors for the seal and the label, but in this case, I'll just keep it the same color. Okay, and so finally, the label. So we're going to start with a slip knot. 
So to make a slip knot, you want to cross your yarn and then you want to pull the yarn through that loop. And that's called a slip knot because if you slip it, then you can tighten it. So you're just going to go tighten it over your hook and then you are going to start by chaining 11. So once you've got um, 11 chains, you're going to um, work in rows. So we're going to start in that second chain. So this is the first chain from the hook and this is here the second chain. So you're going to start in the second chain and you're going to make 10 single crochet across that first chain. All right, so now we've got our 10 single crochet. Um, we're going to do three rows of just single crochet. So in order to turn, what I'll do is I'll go ahead and do one chain and then you can turn your work. And then we're gonna do 10 rows. So we're just gonna crochet in those single crochet stitches there. And we're gonna do that um, for three rows. So 10 single crochet in three rows. Actually, I just had a look at my notes and it's not three rows, it's four. So you're doing four rows now of that single crochet. So that'll give us um, a total of five rows of single crochet. And this is just so that we have that flat label. So feel free to experiment with this. If you want to make a label that's, you know, thinner, thicker, um, yeah, just feel free to experiment. But if you want the same look that I have, it will be five rows in total of single crochet. Um, and that's not counting your starting chain. Okay, um, so I think this is it. Let me just make sure I'm counting my rows. Yeah, that's five rows. So um, you see that's just like a simple square label. And um, what I'll do is I leave quite a long tail for this one because we're gonna need to sew all around um, 
the label to attach it to the bottle. So, and of course, my yarn is tangling. I don't know if that happens to you guys, but it happens to me all the time and it doesn't get better with time. <laughs> if anyone has a trick on how preventing this to happen, I will gladly take it. Okay, so that's it. We'll label, which means that now we are on to the assembly phase. So for the assembly, the first thing you would do is if you want to write something on this label, you would now grab some embroidery thread or some yarn in the color of your choice and you would um, do some embroidery there. Um, I don't really know if I want to do anything. I might just do it like a little star. So I'll just grab um, some of that blue yarn. Why not? I might just do this now. So I'll grab blue yarn. Um, I'll put a knot onto it. I'll make it quite thick so it doesn't go through. And yeah, I think it's just better to embroider it before you actually sew the label on. So now um, we'll just choose which way, obviously, the label will go into. So I guess I'll just leave it this way and I'm just going to make a star roughly in the middle. So doesn't need to be perfect. I'm just going to do a really rough one to show you. I'll just make um, your typical five pointed star. Trying to keep it relatively even, but here we go. Why not? Then I'll just um, weave in my ends at the back. I'm going to try to not go into that yellow layer because I'm a bit afraid it will show through. So I'll just kind of go back and forth a few times on that blue thread that's already at the back and just cut my thread. All right, so now that you've embroidered your label, you can sew that and the wax seal. So I'll start by the wax seal, just because there is a strategic placement to make your bottle look nicer. And this is, so you want to put it where you did your color change. So, I mean, if you do your color change properly, it's not super obvious where you did it, but it's still a little bit you can see here. Right, like this. That's where my color change was. So if I just put that little wax seal where that color change is, I think it's just going to look um, nicer and make it look a lot more finished. So we just put it through. Again, um, I'm just kind of winging it here, but um, if you really want to be very precise, you can put a pin in the middle there. And then what I'll do is I'll come out through a stitch, then come down through the next stitch around, and then go into the underneath of the amigurumi. And then same thing, um, so I'll just go out on here and then back and down onto the next one, and so on and so forth. And I, I really like that look generally, I think it looks nice and tidy. Just be careful not to prick yourself because um, that pin just goes all the way through. 
And I have lost count of how many times I've just pricked my fingers with pins and needles. It's not very nice. <laughs> so, yeah, just be careful. Okay. So now that it's sewn in place, you'll just um, go through, go underneath a few times, just again to make sure that you are securing this in place. Generally a few times is enough. I should say that all my amigurumi are, like they're not really tested, but they're being used by my um, two sons who are three and one um and i mean they like go crazy on them and they've all like they've all pretty much held up pretty well so i think i must be doing something right okay right um so now that you've put your seal now is when you want to use pins for this one so you want to make sure to align your label nicely to the middle of that um wax seal and I think here is probably right. So you want to kind of have about six um, rounds um, below the label. But again, you know, just feel free to kind of have a play with the placement and how you like it. But this is, I think, my preferred. I did the same for this bottle. So I'm going to assume this is probably my preferred aesthetic. And then you'll just do the same thing that we just did for the wax seal. We're just going to sew the label um, on. So the first, so the first step is you just want to have um, that go through the bottle itself. And then we're going to come out um, on one stitch and then go down on the next one and then attach it through the bottle again. And you'll just do that all the way around your bottle, um, your label, sorry. So all the way around the label. Do you sew your pieces like this on amigurumi or do you have a different technique? I'd really love to know. So if, um, you know, you have something different or you do the same, like just let me know down in the comments. I just find it really interesting how everyone has a slightly different way they do things. Um, and it's always good to learn new techniques as well, so. Okay, so I'm back at the beginning. Um, I'm just again going to secure it by just passing it a few times underneath. And then I will also secure the other, um, like the starting yarn tail. So.
just making sure both ends are well secured. And that is it. So Okay, so that's it. Um, my new bottle of champagne. It's star champagne. <laughs> um, and yeah, I hope that you've enjoyed this video. And let me know if you do make that celebration champagne. You can find me on um, social media on Facebook, Instagram, and on uh, Ravelry and Etsy as well for my other paid patterns. And of course, you can find a lot of um, great tips and tutorials on my YouTube and some more free patterns onto my website. I'll put um, the links to all those details below. Um, and yeah, I think it's really funny. You can actually tell how my tensions increase over the year. This one I did at the beginning of 2021 and this one obviously I just did with you now. It's the same yarn, like the same yarn white, the same crochet hook, but I used to crochet a lot looser. Um, so yeah, <laughs> it's really interesting to me. Okay, well, I hope that you have a good day and I'll see you later. Bye.